Joining us this morning for Asking and Connections, we have the pleasure of speaking with Colleen James, Regional Counselor for the Region of Waterloo in Ontario. Welcome to Good Morning Asking and Welcome. Colleen. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. All right. So you've had a career in municipal government at both city and regional levels. And as part of our 16 days of advocacy coverage, we are happy to have you here as an advocate for change in your spaces. So obviously this segment is called Asking Connections and many people may never have heard of Waterloo Canada, but we know that you have a local connection to St. Kitts. So I'm gonna give you the opportunity to tell everyone yes. about that connection. St. Kitts is very close to home on my, my father's side, my paternal side, uh, Frank Sargent, uh, the sergeants, um, you know, that is, is my my ancestry and, and uh, um, grew up going to St. Kitts and, and right. like I said, my dad originally from there and, and his parents. So um, deep connection to St. Kitts. I know that he's watching right now. So hi, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Dad. <laughs> so this position in government may be unfamiliar to our viewing audience. Exactly what does a councillor do? So um, I'm a regional counselor and, and here in Ontario, we've got a tiered system of government. So there's your mayor and council level. Then there's another level that deals a lot with um, um, managing seven area municipalities and uh, um, how the region of Waterloo grows and is um, planned for the next few years. So uh, a lot of the services that, that we provide are around transportation, you know, our bus system and our, tr our, rail, our light rail system, uh, water. Um, we do a lot with community services, public health, are policing so we're really looking at, at this at the regional level it's it's really much that long-term growth strategy plan for for the area uh and and then other levels up get into you know partisan politics but this is a non-partisan level but it's really about um connecting to community dealing a lot with with big budgets and um big planning for for years for decades ahead all right, so you've been on the job now, Colleen, officially for, I would say, less than a month. Is that not correct? That is correct, yeah. It won't be a month until about December 15th, so uh, uh, right into it from the very, from, yeah, the minute we oh. got elected, essentially. <laughs> I, I was actually going to ask you how that month has been for you so far, because you're not new to politics at all, obviously, but are there some novelties in this position that you've noticed so far? Yeah, so so what I will say, just to give some context, is I spent a number of years working, um, supporting a mayor, I managed a, an, an elected official office for multiple years, and then went in, in the position I'm currently in now, I used to be the research assistant to council. So I was seeing firsthand what they were doing, the decisions that were being made, how they were being made. Um, and I recognized there was a disconnect with communities, especially with uh, racialized and marginalized communities. Often decisions were being made um, without having that input in terms of, you know, uh, you know, a holistic approach to the community and what community needs are. So, um, you know, spending that time understanding the system, knowing the system, but also where there can be changes and how we can be better aligned with the needs of communities, especially in this area a growing um, black racialized community. So the, the past month has been um, really just, you know, it is like drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> as much as I know what I know from being on the other side of things, a staff perspective to now just really kind of understanding the magnitude of the decisions and how, um, how complex they are. Uh, but it has been good. It, it really is a, a good feeling to know that, um, you know, as much as I may be one voice, it's a voice that really is reflective of a broader base of the community. Mm, that's very good. And congrats again on your appointment. So yes. in addition to being a counselor, you are also a founder of your own business, Devonify. How do you balance yes. being a counselor and oh. an entrepreneur? I want to know. I'm navigating that balance now. Okay. I, I do have a, a, an equity and inclusion consulting company. So the, with that provides a little bit more flexibility than, than typically working, you know, a nine to five. I was a professor before in, in, in higher education and 
that there wouldn't have been any balance there. Now it's it's really just, you know, there's some autonomy in being able to choose my schedule, but uh, you know, the equity work that I do and you know, it's it's still there. I'm still, you know, passionate about doing it. It it just complements the space that I'm in now as as regional counselor and having that equity informed lens. So it is it is a juggling act plus a family on top of that. So, you know, um yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's, I think that I'll be trying to navigate this for four years, but, you know, I do appreciate that. I do have the flexibility to choose my own schedule as well. And the regional counselor role is only a part-time role, um, which, you know, most people think it's a full-time job, although it pretty much is, but technically it's a part-time, part-time role. So that allows for for a little bit more time. All right. So in terms of your business, Equity and Inclusion Consulting, and that's what I heard. So Devonify, I want to know about the name. I think I kind of can kind of read between the lines, but I want to hear it from you. So Devonify, uh, how did you come up with it? So, you know, I started Devonify about seven years ago now. And the dynamic in the area that we're in, and and I know my father will attest this, you know, there's uh, predominantly white spaces we're in. And I was in a lot of business executive rooms and recognizing that there is a complete um, lens and conversation that isn't happening in spaces, especially corporate spaces, around what that means for those of us who may be marginalized or underrepresented in groups mm-hmm. and in, in workspaces. So the uh, Devonify, it's it's a marriage of diverse and unified kind of put together. Mm-hmm. And I work a lot with organizations to address uh, things like diversity, equity, inclusion, anti-racism, anti-oppression, working through what does it mean for employers to have that lens, have equity embedded throughout organizations. So I do a lot of training uh, workshops, but also helping with some of the, um, um, helping, helping with being that bridge between employees and, and the leadership team on what it means to be committed. I mean, we know 2020 plus happened and, um, the murder of George Floyd, the amplification of black lives matter. And, um, you know, people, although many of us already knew that, that there are inequities in the system, People were focused on it and paying attention to it now. So I, I work a mm. lot with you know private sector organizations, public sector organizations. Not so much public anymore. May have a conflict there, but uh, um, <laughs> uh, uh, you know art galleries. Just really you know the ways in which we can have better policies, um, better practices, promising practices, and you know addressing some of those equity gaps that exist within our organizations. It's very important work, indeed. Indeed, it is. Yeah, so, yeah. Pauline, how do you think your work could assist us here on our island or in our region? How do I, sorry, can you repeat that? How do you think that your work can assist us here in St. Kitts and in our Caribbean region? So, I, you know, one of the things that uh, I, I do think is that whole amplification. Um, often, especially in, in this area, you know, there's that whole Black people are a monolith. And I think I represent something that, I, first of all, I, I represent St. Kitts and proud of St. Kitts. So, you know, helping to amplify that there are more than one island i will tell you uh, it where i am it's very polarized to think that many people are from certain islands and they don't even think about saint kitts and 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 what's happening in saint kitts and you know to me it's about just amplifying and empowering and and really just showcasing um other caribbean islands uh in in particular saint kitts and just you know bridging creating more bridges as well because okay. we all we all are trying to we have government systems and in, in every every place within the world so how can we build better bridges between all right so in 2020 the canada international black women event named you one of the top 100 black women to watch Mm. and in 2021 you were named one of the canadian multicultural groups top 25 diversity equity and inclusion persons of the year Congratulations, first of all. It's great that you made the list. What do these accomplishments mean to you? Um, You know, it's for so often, you know, I think one thing that stands out is uh, feeling valued in the spaces that that you're in and and feeling that sense of belonging. So with the recognition, especially the top 100 Black women to watch in, in Canada, 
uh, you know, where I am, it's 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 a smaller community. There's still about six hundred thousand here, but compared to Toronto and and the bigger municipalities, you often kind of get lost in in those big municipalities. So for me, that that recognition really. Um, showed that there's there's value that that you know valued in the work that I'm doing but also recognizing some of the the work being done in smaller municipalities and smaller communities across across Ontario and uh, or across Canada in this case so that was that was you know huge in in the work that I was doing for a number of years and I think we all we all want to feel that the work we're contributing to is is being valued and seen so it was really important in that aspect and um, you know, for for being um, one of the top twenty five DEI persons of the year in twenty twenty one, I mean, you know, the 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 market became flooded with DEI professionals, anti racism professionals, and um, to have that recognition, especially coming from a smaller town, and and I can um, you know relate this to Saint Kitts in a bit because Saint Kitts was always growing up here. Well, that's just a small island, but you know, recognizing that regardless of size of community you're in you can still have an impact that that impacts people all over all over the country and and, in, and internationally as well mm -hmm. and you, you you spoke about impact what impact do you hope to have on the current role that you're in and at the end of your tenure yeah so you know for me it's about changing systems changing the way we operate there are models that are being used and the models don't work. And okay. you know, to bring in some of my equity work, these models are based on the old colonial structures. You know, um, um, uh, you know, white-dominated ways of operating. And part of what I hope to do, and, and as much as I'm one voice, but it's really kind of challenging the way we do things to get better, better outcomes, and better processes, and more holistic. Um, ways of, of doing things. So for me, it is it's really about creating some of that meaningful change, but also being accountable. There's people who, yeah. and validly so, do not trust government officials. Um, and and what I wanted to do, and, and part of my running was to really say, we can do this better and we can do this differently and that's yeah. okay. Um, so so for me, it's it's also representation. I will tell you, you know, the region started in 1973. My father came, left St. Kitts and came to Canada in 1972. So he, he was here before the, the region was created. And from 1973 to 2022, there has never been a Black or racialized anybody on this council. So, um, and the community where I am, it's the 10th largest uh, diverse community. Uh, so clearly there's a disconnect and, um, and, and running and, and recognizing that we potentially be making history, but also having a greater impact on community is, is kind of, you know, the, the driving force. And yes. I, I have a young daughter, we have, uh, there's generations here in Canada, um, and, and they need to see themselves reflected in these, in the key decision making. And if we're not part of the conversation, we're, we're not going to be um, included in a way that that's meaningful. Mm, definitely indeed. so, Colleen. And, you know, to hear you speak about your daughter, I can imagine not only that legacy that you're leaving for her, but other Black girls watching, other uh, minority groups watching who can say, and other women watching even can say, well, you know what, you are an inspiration, so I'm really glad that you're doing this work. Uh, what should we be watching for and what should we be expecting from you in 2023? Yeah, you know, I think... Um, uh, I'm, I'm conscious of choosing all my battles at council, but I think uh, what uh, nice. <laughs> what you can look forward to is just a, a different ways of, of 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 approaching how we connect with community. I'm about engagement and uh, and transparency. So you will see me, you know, connecting more with community to be informed with how I make the decisions at regional council table. Uh, but also, you know, just again, being being a representative too. you know, I was receiving lots of emails after I won from community just saying, you know, like we're with you. You're not alone at this table. And and one of the things with the with the campaign and even running is that I didn't just win. I was first. There's four seats and I was first and and you know, pretty much a landslide win, which people yeah. didn't expect at all. So 
uh, for me, it's just, it's, it's that, you know, reassurance and, and um, reinforcing the need that we, we can, and we should be in all spaces and it can happen. And for me, it showed that, you know, the community was ready for this change because there's others, you know, people have tried and, and just, you know, couldn't break that barrier. And I think, uh, you know, the reality is it's 2022, we should have representation in all spaces and we didn't, but yeah. at least there's a barrier broken. And I think for, for future generations and people who are engaged in, in politics, at least they know they won't have to be the first. And and I'll try and make sure that that door stays open and that, you know, there's yeah. the opportunity yeah. consists for, for people going who want to get into politics. 